just uh, take it away, John. Thanks, Peter. So uh, I, I don't usually do this thing at the beginning of the talk where you thank the organizers, but I, I'm gonna take this opportunity to do that. I'm really excited about all the changes I've seen this year. I think the code of conduct is great. I think the cards are great. I think you guys are doing a fantastic job at sort of making this more um, accessible, right? And, and in the spirit of openness, this is fantastic. So thank you. <laughs> All right. So uh, Dan mentioned uh, workflows, and I think traditionally g Galaxy workflows have been kind of an illusion. Um, but before I um, before I make that case, I'm going to actually say that they're kind of a cool illusion. Okay. So there's a lot of good things about the workflows. They're designed for biologists. Um, they're very accessible. Um, Dan made this point. You know, you can tweak every parameter, and it's all via web GUI. They're shareable, they're publishable. Um, there's some good examples of this. Um, and uh, Michael referenced this, this blog post earlier from uh, Samuel, um, that, that the data flow in Galaxy is, is pretty good um, for its workflows. But uh, honestly, less than 15% of users on usegalaxy.org ever use a workflow. Um, so it's mostly an interactive environment. And I think this has a lot to do with like limitations of the workflow system. So I'm going to talk about how we're trying to remedy that because th this could be a really great feature. Um, so, so in the past, Galaxy didn't really schedule workflows. Um, it would just queue up a bunch of jobs all at once when you made the request, even if it's 200 jobs. Uh, therefore, Galaxy really had no way to sort of conditionally evaluate branches of workflows or handle dynamic functionality that one would expect from a more traditional workflow system. Um, so here I have uh, two examples uh, of real workflow systems um, but that, that, are, that are also going to illustrate not only our, uh, that in the past we didn't have a, the ability to do the dynamic stuff, but our data flow was a little limited too. So, so both uh, NIME and Traverna have offered um, the ability to do sort of map reduce operations for a long time, the ability to sort of say here are a bunch of files, not just one file, um, um, and map an operation over them, um, re do reductions um, on steps. Um, so these are some good examples. Um, I think that Galaxy over the last year and a half has really addressed these problems, um, and I'm going to talk about our solutions. Um, you can now, we now have data flow that um, can handle these map reduce style operations through data set collections, which we'll talk about, and we've implemented a real workflow engine, um, and I'll, I'll talk about some, some workflows that's going to enable. Um, so data set collections are just this idea that we're going to take some data sets and, and put them together so we can operate them on them as, you know, as a collection. Uh, that's a bit redundant. Um, so we have two kinds in Galaxy. The, we have lists and we have pairs, and they can be nested. So a list of paired data sets is a pretty common operation um, for the tool set on, uh, on usegalaxy.org, for instance. Just to sort of walk through the interface of how we would do this, let's start and we'll let's upload um, a bunch of FASTQ files and, 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 a, and a sequence file to map it against. Um, in your Galaxy interface, after you've uploaded them, you can select them. You can click this build list of data set pairs. Uh, I, I saw, I'm sorry. these images are a little bit out of date. Um, but we have a really nice interface that I think allows even a biologist um, who doesn't understand regular expressions to sort of to use them if they want or, 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 or do this via clicking, um, but to sort of build these up and build these, these sort of advanced data structures themselves uh, is really, I think, uh, is, is a sort of uh, a unique and, and a, pr a pretty good interface for doing that. Um, the interfaces for building just like, like a single pair or a list are, are a little bit simpler. Um, once you have this data set collection up here, this element eight in this history, um, you can map an operation over it. So here we have a fast queue groomer tool that just no generally takes a fast queue file and, 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 and builds a new one. And what it will do is um, it will run the tool over each element of the collection and return a new, a new list of pairs. Um, so, so, that, so that's that, that mapping operation. Um, and the uh, uh, Galaxy also sometimes has, um, in the past, not been so great about um, tracking data throughout complex workflows. But in collections, the element identifier from the initial collection is, is, is carried through throughout. So it's, it's really easy to do this sample tracking. Um, we, we've got a tool like a mapper that takes in a paired file. If you send it a list of paired files, um, uh, you can, uh, it, it will map over each element of the pair and give you just a flat list back. Um, all, most of our tools at this point have been updated to do this, so Bowtie 2, Top Hat, BWA, MEM. Um, uh, here's just some more examples. I'm going to go kind of quick. There's a lot of Galaxy today. Uh, <laughs> if there are questions, feel free to just sort of corner me afterwards. Happy to talk about this, but 
so much galaxy, right? Um, so that's the same, same thing with the, the identifiers. We have uh, merge steps. So any existing tool that takes in just um, individual data sets, the user can now just specify a collection and it will sort of map it over. I mean, it will, it will, the, the infrastructure will handle that. So the tools didn't really need to be retrofitted. Once we're done, we've done an analysis, we can extract a workflow. Um, and, and now we have this, this complex data work, this complex data flow that, that, that some other workflow uh, systems have had for a while um, within Galaxy. Um, so this was, the, this was the, the simple example that I, I showed off at last year's GCC last July. Since then, this has really taken off. I'm gonna show some examples um, that I've actually got. So we just finished our, our last conference uh, two days ago and, and, and I've, I've hunted some down uh, that were presented. So, uh, but first, this is a, a, a pretty typical RNA-seq workflow based on the Tuxedo Suite. Um, we can show doing multiple, going through with multiple samples now. Um, here's a, a, a core phylogenetics um, SNP pipeline developed um, at the, uh, the uh, um, Canadian Public Health Agency. They, they use it to track foodborne illness. They, they, they handle hundreds of paired strains at a time. There's a really nice talk from Aaron Petkow about it um, at the GCC, so there's a link there. Um, there's a protein identification workflow here that's using OpenMS. Um, this was developed by Torsten. Uh, by Torsten. Um, and, and there's a link there. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, Beyond these workflows, it was really banner year, I think, for Galaxy tool development. We put a lot of effort into updating all the tools, and a big part of that was, was making them all compatible with uh, these concepts of data collect set collections. Uh, we now support collection-aware read group handling for, these, uh, for various uh, mappers, for instance. So we could do all of those things uh, without rewriting the workflow engine. It was just a matter of, uh, of handling the steps because we, were, we, we always would know how many jobs um, you know, uh, mapping a collection would have, or or reducing the collection would have, but there 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 were there there are cases where you want to do something more, like splitting something out, right? The 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 scatter step. So here's a here's here are a couple slides from Marco Albuquerque's talk uh, again at this year's GCC. Um, he had a BAM file in his workflow. This is a this is a cancer genomics workflow. He was doing um, uh, somatic uh, SMV detection or Identification, annotation, it's probably the word. Um, so you want to take the BAM file, he, wants to, he wanted to uh, pull out some regions and, 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 and map over different parts of the BAM file without actually splitting the BAM file up. Um, and then he wanted to merge it at the end, right? So this, this was a problem for our workflow engine since the number of jobs was dependent on the data and it wasn't known ahead of time. Um, and so here's, he, he did some work on this. Um, but this was this was not this would not have been possible this build interval stuff without rewriting the workflow engine. So let me transition now to the workflow we write. So we've we've added stateful models for everything. This allows us to sort of reevaluate the workflow as it's as it's uh, as it's as it we're sort of generating the steps in it. Um, we we've added a plugin framework to describe how the scheduling occurs, and and, and we've added stuff like pause and steps and 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 things like this. And that, it's a groundwork for sort of future enhancements to the workflow engine. Adding things like loops and conditionals are now possible. There was some good work um, on both of these fronts at the GCC's hackathon this year. Um, and so now this workflow should be possible. Um, so we talked to him, I talked to him at the, at the GCC and he's gonna get back to me uh, once he gets that done, but it's, it's a work in progress still. Um, there's some other people using this concept of output collections. Kyle Elrath at UCSC. Um, is doing something similar where he's splitting up a BAM file here instead of breaking it into regions and, and he's actually splitting the BAM file um, and then merging the results and there's some so a link there to some of his work. Um, it, the workflow engine in, in doing this um, also has allowed us to sort of build implicit connections between steps. So this is not about data flow but just saying simply this step needs to occur before this step without an explicit input to output relationship. That the, the, the workflow model before was so simple it wouldn't even allow that. But now, but now it does and uh, you know, the admins can use this to build up workflows that populate reference data in Galaxy, for instance, where the thing that's being created at one step isn't a data set, but it's just some reference data that's sitting on the hard drive. And Dan gave a talk at the GCC about this. Again, another link. Um, so future work, we're, we're, we're aiming at, you know, 10,000 samples, people throw that around, I don't know why. 
but it's just a number. Once we get there, we'll want more. Um, but we want to, you know, optimize the database interactions to do this. It's, it's um, we're we're going to keep making the workflow scheduler more interesting um, and to sort of handle these the, the new workflows that are coming out. Streaming was mentioned by Michael earlier. That's an important application that that will also be needed um, for these larger workflows. Um, thanks to the there's the Galaxy team again. Uh, Carl, who's not here, uh, but did most of the UI for this. He's doing a fantastic job on, on collections. And a big thanks to the Galaxy community. They build awesome stuff. We feel a lot about it today. Um, and I think specifically, Philip Mavon has really pushed the collection stuff, and, and, and that was that phylogenetics workflow. So he's, he's worked very closely with me on this work. All right, thanks.